He asks me a lot of questions about my ex-boyfriend. Not all at once, but here and there they peek out a smattering of curiosity. How did you meet? How old is he? And why did you break up exactly? And why did you break up now, finally, after all of these years? And why? As hard as I try, my answers never feel adequate. We met through a college professor, my mentor, your friend. You saw me do spoken word. You were too old for me, but eventually I didn't care. I was in love and I looked past it. I looked past a lot of things. I loved your brain, so I didn't mind the body that came with it so uptight. It's not a bad body, but we never had a spark. I didn't want to fuck the shit out of you, so eventually we didn't fuck at all, and I tried to convince myself that this was a natural progression, that I could live with it, because a lot of other things were really good. From the outset, we were really good, and from the outside, we were the couple that everyone loved and admired and rooted for. Me, feisty and fun, you, thoughtful and calm, the kind of presence at any party that attracted all of my poor young friends in need of advice. You were so nice. You are the nicest person I will ever know. Now, I'm feeling a bit desperate. It's hard to explain the ins and outs of a relationship without going deep, and I don't want to overwhelm the listener with tales of the back and forth, the conflicted heart, the years of wondering why something always felt off. But when you got sick before the Arctic Fire Show and missed it, it was a turning point. When you refused to see a therapist, a turning point. When your boss was a dick to me and you still didn't quit, a turning point. It took a lot of turning points and 360 degree rotations to spin fast enough, to push hard enough, to fall out of the circle, you and I and I and you. You and I and I. You were constant, content, and I miserable but content with pretending. I could not be the girl who asked you to move your whole life to another country with no job and no language and no friends and then dump you. And when you got sick, I didn't know if you needed a mother or an ass kicker. I opted for the latter and complained to my friends, to any friend who would listen about how stagnant we felt. How wasted I was on this unambitious man. How I loved but didn't lust. How I wanted out but didn't want to let go. It's not easy to leave someone after so many years. To think that some far off day you'll want to turn to the person next to you in bed and say, remember when we were young and in Berlin? Remember the night we saw the fox on David Bowie's birthday and the street was silent and filled with snow? Remember kissing in London in front of the casino? Remember the cats and how small they used to be? Do you remember me? Do you remember me? You knew me at 19 and 20 and 21 and 22 and 23 and 24, which was a fucking doozy. And 25, I spent my birthday sick in a bathtub and you brought me breakfast at 26. 26 is the year I decided I did not need you anymore. And now I feel I have a mark on my forehead, a red X painted thickly, a red flag spiking from my back to warn the others. She was six years gone. Six years with one person is basically a marriage without the party, so I'm basically divorced without the alimony, and I'm not sure. Does that mean that I'm used up now? Or that I'm intimidating because I've seen things the others haven't? Or maybe I'm boring because I was busy building shelves and making soup while my classmates were snorting coke and fucking bartenders. <laughs> or maybe I'm scary. This is a serious girl and her blowjobs come with a price tag. Six years <laughs> and two cats. <laughs> Plus, she'll make you move to Berlin, then be upset when you're unemployed, have no friends, and so much anxiety, you vomit on the S-Bahn. Twice. I thought I was a nurturer. I thought I was loyal. I thought I was girlfriend. I thought I was nice. I thought that I was easy to fall in love with. I thought I had an ass that don't quit. I thought that my hair was my best feature and that my vibe, a hint Bowie, a little manic pixie was fun. 
and even being red. I thought I was nice, but I thought that I'm nice and not nice, and that's a lose-lose, and maybe I would feel like less of a loser if I could forget, but I want to remember everything about us. To remember in real time what happened from moment one, Danny, this is Ty, until the last one, sitting at opposite ends of the bed and you saying, so sad, I know that we're broken up now. I want to wake up and understand us, to be able to answer why, what was the reason for any of this, how much do six years and countless good intentions add up to, three million minutes? And is it enough to say that I am grateful for every stupid one of them, every second of you and I and I and you?